Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest Sea Church in Harvest, Alabama. Uh, this morning's lesson, uh, Sunday School Lesson, comes from Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 31, Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 27 to 34. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right minds, and giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you, Lord, that when we woke up this morning, there was no bad news. You, you watched over us all night long and took care of all that we love, everyone that we love, Lord. And we thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you now, Lord, that as we get ready to study your word today, continue to watch over us and keep us. Bless us now, dear Heavenly Father, that your word might go forth with uh, your power, Lord, your anointing on it. And that it might touch someone and that they might be encouraged by your power, encouraged and strengthened in your strength, the Lord. Thank you for this right now in the name of Jesus. This is the day that you have made, O oh Lord, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And Lord, we just thank you and praise your name because you're so worthy of the praise. We give you glory, God. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry uh, Sunday School Lesson. And I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy. Um, the lesson, like I said, comes from uh, Jeremiah chapter 31. So turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. And I'm going to read out of the... Uh, King James Version of the Bible first, and then uh, when I'm doing the lesson, I'll do the New Living Translation. But the King James Version of the Bible says this in Jeremiah chapter 31, starting at verse 27. It says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of of man and with the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that like as I watched over them to pluck up, to break down, and to throw down, and to destroy, and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. In those days they shall say no more, the father have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But every one shall die for his own iniquities. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the day comes, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. But this, shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. And after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, 
for the, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities, and I will remember their sin no more. Amen. That is Jeremiah chapter 31, starting at verse 27 all the way down to 34. Our, our uh, memory verse, our key verse is verse 33. He says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saying, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their hearts inner parts and write it in their hearts and and will be their God and they will be my people. The key concept for this lesson is God made a great promise to write his law on, on the hearts of his people. Our keys for kids this morning is that God, number one, God's people had disobeyed his commandments, but he still loved them. Number two, God made a covenant that is a promise with his people. God, with his people. Number three, God promised to be with his people and write his law unto their hearts. And so as we study this lesson this morning, our lesson aim, our lesson uh, aim the facts that we're going to learn is to, to list the most important features of this new covenant, of this new covenant. And then to explain the biblical principles is to explain the significance of the new covenant being written on the heart rather than on tablets of stone. And then our daily application, what we want to grab from this lesson is to fully embrace God's way so that his law is written in our hearts. Amen. Amen. So uh, the title of this lesson is, 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 is the promise of a new covenant or, uh, and, 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 or God's great promise. And we're going to break this thing down into three different parts. Um, part one is God's promise of restoration. That's going to be verses 27 and 28 of Jeremiah chapter 31. Then our next section is going to be God's warning of individual responsibility. God's warning of individual responsibility. And that's verses 29 and 30. And then our last section is God's assurance of the new covenant relationship. Oh, hallelujah. Verses 31 through 34. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful uh, breakdown of this lesson. This lesson is in Jeremiah, and we know that Jeremiah was born into the priestly family, and he, he was called to be a prophet as a young, at a very young age. Uh, his words were, were not accepted by the establishment in, Ju in, Ju uh, in Judah. He was, he was a man that was rejected, if you will, and considered still one of the most relevant prophets in the Old Testament. Jeremiah's prophetic career prepared the children of Israel for their uh, uh, impending exile. His, his, his poetic words, graced by God's calling, offered both warnings and promises to the children of Israel. Jeremiah, words are regarded as an important part of the prophetic calling and, and, uh, and projected the uh, uh, trajectory of the Israelites and, shall, and still renounced to us today. His words are still important to us today because I, I, I mean, he said it, he said it so poetically. God is going to, to, to write his, his, his law, his word unto our hearts. That, that's so poetic. And that's what God is doing in this new covenant that we're in even today. God writes his word into our hearts. 
we we are the children of the most high god and and his and his word is in our hearts and we we you know i i i may be getting ahead of myself from talking about it from a new testament standpoint but but even from from that standpoint a new testament standpoint it is when the holy spirit comes upon us it is when the holy spirit is in us that 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 that, that his word is now residing in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's how the word of God is written on our hearts. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so this, this book of, uh, uh, of Jeremiah is uh, this pre-exile prophetic book. And, and meaning it was written prior to, to Israel being exiled from the promised land. Now we know that Judah had already been exiled. But but now he's he's writing to 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 to, to the to the kingdom of Israel because you know kingdom of Israel Judah and 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 Israel separated from one another, and so um, this is important to help us understand Jeremiah's role as a prophet. He 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 told him about the exile, and then he told him that I, when all this punishment and all of this. This discipline that God is going to going to put on you come, is removed. He's going to put you into a promised land. He's going to bring you back to the promised land, and he's going to empower you. And so here it is uh, um, that the people are, 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 are at a point where they, they really don't want to listen to Jeremiah. But Jeremiah is a prophet who was called to proclaim God's word. And he had to tell it, as we say, like a TIS, whether they rejected him or persecuted him, it did not matter. He still had to proclaim God's word. And, and so I, I say to us who, 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 who are the children of God, those of us who are, are lay persons, those of us who are, are, are ministers, and evangelists and all that, do we speak God's word even though we get or may get rejected? Oh, hallelujah. We, we, we have to do it. We have to do it. So let's let's jump into our first section. Our first section is, is uh, uh, verses 27 and 28, and that's God's promise of restoration. Listen to it from the New Living Translation. This day is coming, says the Lord, when I will greatly increase the human population and the number of animals here in Israel and Judah. In the past, I deliberately uprooted and tore down this nation. I threw it, destroyed it, brought disasters upon it. But in the future, I will just as deliberately plant it, build it, and build it. I, the Lord, have spoken. And so here, here, here is, is this promise of restoration. Yeah, God is saying, I love you, Israel. I love you so much that I got to discipline you. Because whom the Father disciplines, he loves. And, and, and he said, I, I had to do this. I had to do this. But, but, but now, when all of this discipline is over, I'm going to do a mighty thing for you. I, I, I'm, I'm going to increase your human population. I'm going to do a mighty thing. Not only am I going to increase your human population, I'm going to, to, to increase the number of animals you, go, you have, the cows and the goats and all of that. And, 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 in, and the new King, I mean, in the King James Version, he says it in a really, really, you know, a uh, funny way, if you will, a convoluted way. He says the house of Judah, uh, he going to plant a seed. I'm going to sow in the house of Israel and Judah the seed of man and the seed of a beast. God God is going to do a planting. He's, 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 he's going he's gonna to give them all of these things. It, that's what God is going to do. It, it's not their responsibility. God says, I'm going to take care of this. That, that's part of his promise of his restoration. See, here it is. When, when we have sinned and, and fallen short of the glory of God, we need to be restored. And, and I hear 1 John 1, 9 when God said, if you confess your sins, 
He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and then cleanse you of all unrighteousness. God is in the, 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 the business of restoration. He's in the business of restoring us after we have been broken down. Sometimes we're broken down because of our own disobedience. Sometimes we're broken down because the world is just like that. They will attack us on every given side. Sometimes we're, we're broken down because the devil himself, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, has, 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 has came at us and his attack has been successful. But thanks be to God, oh hallelujah, that God has the ability to restore us, no matter what condition he, we're in. He, he, he reaches down, even if he has to reach way down, and he'll pick us up and turn us around and place our feet on solid ground. And at the same time, he was telling these children of Israel, I was the one that disciplined you because of your idolatry, because of your wayward ways. I was the one that discipline you. But at the same fervor, the same relentlessness that I discipline you with, I'm going to restore you with that same relentlessness. And I'm going to build you back up. Oh, I, I don't know about you. I, I done had some setbacks. I mean, those setbacks, oh man, just, just had me out the box. But every time that I can look back over my life and see all of the setbacks, I've come to realize that those setbacks was a setup for a comeback because that's how God has been. He restores. Oh, hallelujah. God promised the children of Israel restoration. Our next section is God warns of individual responsibility. God warns of individual responsibility. That's verses 29 and 30. I got to read this one from the King James first because the, the, here it is. This 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 language is it, it you, we need to hear it, then I'll read it from the mess, I mean from the New Living Translation. Listen to it from the King James. Verse 29. In those days they shall say no more, the father hath eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquities. Every man that eateth the sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. Oh, hallelujah. God warns of individual responsibility. The people, it says in the New Living Translation, shall no longer quote this proverb. The, the, the parents have eaten, our, eaten sour grapes, but their children's mouth pucker at the taste. And all people will die for their own sins. Those who eat the sour grapes will be ones whose mouth will pucker. God reminds them of this popular proverb about sour grapes. The proverb was used to explain how children suffer the consequences of their parents' disobedience. The Lord said that the dynamic would, would no longer be in effect in the, in the days when he brought Israel back. Every person would pay for his or all, his own sinful ways. This means that he would treat each person sins individually. A person sin will be their own responsibility. They will reap the consequences of their good and bad choices. 
I, 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 I often said this and I'll say it again here. We can, we have free will. God give us free will to make good and bad choices. He, he allows us to make any choice we want to make. But we can never choose the consequences of our choices. I mean, we, we, when we take risk, it's a risk. And if we take a risk and sin, oh mercy, you will reap what you sow. But the opposite is also true. When you take a risk to do something good, you will also, I mean, sow something good. You will also reap something good. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so this, this is now, God is telling them through the prophet Jeremiah, you, you got to take care of this stuff for yourself. It's an individual thing. Now, now we know, we know, we talk about generational curses, and, and generational curses are, are, are still in play and, and because many times people follow after those same things that their parents did. Many families have alcoholism that runs through the vein of the family. Many people have, 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 have drug habits that run through the family. Many people have uh, 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 married, I mean, have babies out of wedlock that run through the family. And they don't never get married. Many people have, have, have people in their family who run from one woman to another woman to another woman. And all of this run through the family. And, 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 and these are generational curses that, 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 that seem to be hard to break. But here's the thing. You can't blame that on your daddy, your mama, your grandmama, your granny. You can't blame it on them. You have to take individual responsibility and confess your own sins and trust and believe that God is faithful and just. And he'll break that, that, that generational curse right there with you. Oh, I'm a living testimony. He'll do it. I know he will. Oh, hallelujah. So now we're going to go to the last part of our lesson, which is God's assurance of this new covenant relationship. God's assurance of this new covenant relationship. And that's verses 31 down to 34. Listen to the text from the New Living Translation. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their, their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They, they, they broke that covenant. Though I love them as a husband loves his wife, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my instructions deep within them. I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. And they, they will not, not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord. For everyone, from the least to the greatest, will know me already, says the Lord. And I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sin. Oh, hallelujah. God gives assurance of his new covenant relationship. The children of Israel had, 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 had broken God's relationship. He had broken, they had broken, excuse me, God's covenant and, and, and made their relationship all so hard. And God says, look, 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 I know what I did for the children of Israel. I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I brought them through the wilderness. I gave them my commandments. And yet they broke them. I, I loved them. I loved them, he says, like a husband loves his wife. 
I took care of them. I watched over them. I protected them. I was passionate with them. I, I, I loved on them. But yet, the children of Israel broke the covenant. But God says, I'm getting ready to give them a new covenant. I'm, I'm getting ready to, to make a new agreement with them. I'm getting ready to, 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 to make it a, a, a new relationship with them. And this time, it's not going to be based on rules and regulations. It's not going to be based on you do this and do that and do this and do that. And if you don't do this, you're going to do that. You're going to get that and all. It's not going to be based on that. It's going to be based on a relationship with a heart. God is putting in us will be a new heart that knows right and wrong. And that new heart will want to always love God and choose right and do right according to his will and his way. Oh, hallelujah. But God gives this new covenant. He desired for the children of Israel to want to read his word and study his word and, and grab a hold of his word that his word might be a lamp Unto their feet in a light. Unto their path. His word. Became eternalized. It was no longer just an outward. Expression. It was something that was going to be on the inside. And he promised the children of Israel. You, when, when, when you get this kind of word in you. When you get my Holy Spirit in you. You won't be going around asking folks. Trying to say, well, do you know the Lord? Yeah, you won't have to say that because everybody's going to know the Lord. That was his promise to the children of Israel. Now, that promise is made to us also. Because this new covenant that God established with the exiles of Israel did not and has not fully came to fruition. This new covenant has come to pass in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And all of us who give our lives to Jesus who, who faithfully says, I believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. I confess to my mouth. Receives a new heart. 